Welcome to the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps webinar. Our county is ranked in the middle of the pack. Now what? My name is Jan O'Neill, and I'm a community coach with the County Health Roadmaps Project. And with me is my colleague, Karen Odegaard. We're excited to also have Mayor Bill Butici and Abra Dodson from Gem County, Idaho. And you'll hear from them a bit later. Good afternoon. I will be providing a brief introduction of the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps program and we'll also be assisting in answering your questions during the webinar. Before we get started today, we just have a couple of reminders. Handouts for today's presentation, including slides, are currently available online. We just posted a link in the chat box um, that you'll see in your, your control panel. Jan also sent these out in advance um, earlier this morning. A recording of today's webinar will also be archived and available on our website later in the week. Also today, um, we will be tweeting during the webinar, so if you want to follow along, you can find us at CH Rankings, and I will be sharing, um, I'll send out a link quickly so you can connect with us via Twitter. While we have the privilege of talking with you today, we want to start by acknowledging that the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps Program is the result of the contributions of many partners including the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, our colleagues here at the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute, and the various partners who help us compile the rankings data and get the message out about rankings and roadmaps. We also want to take a moment to get you oriented to the technology we're using today. The GoToWebinar attendee interface is made up of two parts. On the left here, you can see the viewer window where attendees can see our screen. And on the right, you can see the control panel, which is where you can interact with us. Because of the number of people we have on today's webinar, we will be answering questions, or excuse me, taking questions via the control panel. Please feel free to enter your questions in the control panel at any time. We will answer your questions toward the end of the webinar. Feel free um, to, to chat with us that way, and also just chime in and let us know um, if you have a thought or a comment about um, what you're hearing from our guests today. So since we're going to be talking about what to do about your rank, we'd like to know how your community or your county is organized to take action. We're going to launch a rapid response poll right now to hear from you. So we'll just take a, a moment here. <clears throat> and let you respond, let us know how, how you are organizing yourself to take action in your community. We'll give you just a, a moment more. This is always so interesting for us to see yeah. um, where you where you are at and to learn more about your communities through the, the polls. And then to have the fun of revealing it. Yes, <laughs> big reveal. Okay, here comes the big reveal. Here we go. Yep. So, um, so it looks like many of you have stakeholders who are coordinating with each other, which is which is great. It's a great place to be. Um, there are some of you who really feel that you have well coordinated collaborative movement, which is fantastic. It's very exciting. Um, and some of you are, are really just getting started with partnerships. And you know, partnership is one of those ongoing things that you're you're kind of always in that that stage where you're always developing new partnerships, always recruiting. Um, so, yeah. Right. And I think when we get into the Gem County interview also, which you all will hear no matter where, how you answered on this, I think you're going to be able to find something that will help you wherever you are with your partnership ongoing recruitment and development. Great. Okay. So we'll hide that now. So by the end of today's webinar, we're hoping you're going to have some answers to this essential question. If we're a middle-ranked county, what can we do to improve our health? Our agenda for today is to first quickly ground us all in the county health rankings model and measures, and then we'll interview Mayor Bill Butici and Abra Dodson about how they're improving health in Gem County, Idaho. And then I will have some time for Q&A at the end of the interview, and we'll summarize and close by the end of the hour. Throughout the webinar, we'll be sharing 
links to various uh, websites and tools that we invite you to explore as you're listening. By the end of this webinar, we have some goals. We hope you'll understand how to use rankings as a call to action, how to learn, learn some strategies for taking action in middle-ranked counties, but actually they have strategies that are worth using in any county. And finally, know where to find tools for taking action. And before Karen gives us a brief overview of the rankings model and where to find our tools, what we'd like to do is conduct another quick poll to see how familiar, familiar you are with the rankings model and the action center. So what I'm going to do is... We're going to launch that poll here. Um, so what we'd like to hear from you is how familiar are you with the, with the county health rankings model specifically? You guys are being a great audience. You're just jumping right in here on these polls. Yeah. Thank you. Great. We appreciate yeah, that. that. Over 80% have voted. Great. All right. I'm going to close that and then share it. So that's good. We have only 6% saying, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we always go over the model in our webinars because it's such an underpinning, such a foundation for everything. And but we recognize that many of you, as you see here, you know, it's, it's over seventy, almost seventy percent have uh, are very familiar. I've heard it explained. So what I'm going to be doing while Karen is explaining the model is I am going to be um, putting some links in. We're not offended if you multitask during this time, but um, but uh, do tune in if if it's something that you haven't seen a whole lot. Um, we also want to find out how much you've used the Action Center. So Karen, are you launching that poll? Or yes, that let's one? go to that. Yeah. All right. So here we want to, to understand how familiar you are with the Roadmaps to Health Action Center. OK, great. Thank you for voting so quickly, everybody. All right. Got about close to 70 percent of voted. Give another couple of moments here. Okay. All right. I think we'll. Yep. Yeah. We'll share those results. <clears throat> so yeah, a mix here too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is fairly common. So we'll we'll make sure that we do touch a little bit more on the Action Center and, yeah. and what you can find there. And uh, yeah. yeah. So let's let's move into that. Right. This is great. Thank you for participating. Thank you all. All right. So why are we doing the County House Rankings? Um, we will be releasing the 2014 County House Rankings on March 26th, and, and we do this because the rankings help simplify complex data. They serve as a hook as well. They help us get others engaged in um, what's happening in our communities. The media will cover the County House Rankings, and um, and the rankings add context, so they help us see how do we do, how do we compare in our county to those to other counties in our state. Um, they they give us an entry point and not an end point, and so they are an important um, an important conversation starter in our communities. They're a call to action to help us engage others in, in our work and to like we said here to engage the media in the work that we're doing in the county health rankings and in our communities. So this slide shows our thinking about the rankings, how the rankings can be used to improve the health of the community. We start with population-based data from a variety of sources. Then we use that data to rank the health of nearly every county in every state. So we will be releasing the 2014 County Health Rankings on, again, March 26th. This will surely attract um, a, a lot of media attention. So some of you may see stories in your local media or even better, you may use the rankings report to get the word out to your local media and others about the rankings. Um, 
and what you're doing in your community, using that rankings report as a call to action. This call to action is intended to help community leaders bring people together from a variety of sectors to look further at a community's needs. Community members identify, can then work together to identify evidence-informed policies and programs that can be implemented locally. And as a result, ultimately, the health of the community improves. So again, the county health rankings are really all about that call to action. The horizontal portion of the model that we're looking at here underpins the rankings. And the county health rankings help communities understand what's making them sick or healthy and serves as that call to action. So now we're seeing here the vertical portion highlighted. This is uh, really where the roadmaps come in. The county health roadmap helps communities take action to become healthier places to live, learn, work, and play. So we're going to start with the rankings. And uh, you see here we rank the health. Each county receives two rankings, a health outcomes ranking and a health factors ranking. We do this because there are two messages to convey. The health outcomes ranking helps us see where we are today. And the health factors ranking helps us see where we might be in the future and what we can focus on, what we can work on to improve health in our communities. Counties are only ranked in comparison or relative to other counties within their state. So this is the model. This is the model that we are asking about in the poll question. And it underpins the county health rankings. So I wanted to just quickly walk through how this model, how we think about this model, and, and help you think about how you might use this model to engage partners in your work to talk about the, the various things that impact health in your community. So starting from the bottom, we know that effective local, state, and federal policies and programs can improve a variety of factors that, in turn, shape the health of communities. Many health factors shape our community's health outcomes. So we are specifically looking at health behaviors, clinical care, social and economic factors, and the physical environment. We measure two types of health outcomes to show how healthy a county is, looking at how long people live and how healthy people feel. So let's think of an example. Um, if you take a clean indoor air policy, this is an example of a policy that could be potentially at the local level, local level or the state level that can influence health factors such as tobacco use or um, the physical environment in terms of indoor air quality. This in turn influences our health outcomes. We often point to this image as one of our most important. It outlines what we use to determine the county health rankings and what influences health in a community. But it's also a great tool to engage partners in your work to help people find themselves in this conversation about health improvement. So when you go to our website, you'll see a map where you can click on your state and from there, your county, to find out how you rank this year and for the past three years. You'll find data on the 30 measures that we use to rank counties, as well as additional data that can help be helpful to your work. Throughout our site, you'll see two tabs at the top of each page. That Roadmaps tab will take you over to the action side of the site and get you right into the Roadmaps to Health Action Center. So this is our main County Health Roadmaps page. Here you can, um, you can see some different tools to help communities on their journey to health. So we've specifically created the Roadmaps to Health Action Center, um, which is where you will find tools and guidance so for each step in the take action cycle. So the take action cycle is what you see here. And this is, um, this is sort of our roadmap for taking action, right? At its core are people working together to improve health in a community. Often this will require a new way of working together, new relationships. Or it may require taking a careful look at what everyone else is already doing to see how working together more can be done. Communities can improve health by following the steps around the cycle, assessing needs and resources, focusing on what's important, choosing effective policies and programs, and acting on what's important, and then being sure to evaluate those actions along the way. Great. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Thanks for going over the Action Center. And uh, if you want to go and look at the Action Center, that's um, been put into the chat link there. What I'd like to do next is to welcome Mayor Bill Vitici and Abra Dotson from the Gem County Community Health Connection. 
Idaho. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. Great. Great to have you all on. Thank you for joining us. So, um, appointed to the Emmett City Council in October 2007, Bill Bucicci completed two years of his term on City Council before running for mayor, unopposed, in 2009, and he was again reelected in 2013. Mayor Bucicci's goal is to promote health and wellness while keeping the community engaged in healthy activities. Ms. Avra Dodson has been director of the Gem County Recreation District for six and a half years. She is a longtime Idaho resident. She has a degree in recreation administration with a business minor. And she also has completed a community development institute course. She's deeply involved in her community as a bill and serves on many committees, committees, including the role of treasurer of the business improvement district. So again, welcome Bill and Avra. And Mayor, would you please tell us a little about uh, Jim County? Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim County is in southwest Idaho, and uh, our county population is about 16,000 or 17,000 people. About uh, 7,100 households. Our medium age is about 42, and our income is about 42,000, which I think is a little bit high. Uh, we do have a poverty level here. Um, right now, our largest employers, the school district, about 120 staff, and followed by our county, which is about 135 estimated. Agriculture is uh, kind of our industry now with family farms and ranches being there. Uh, in the earlier days, it was agriculture. Uh, our lost industry was uh, the lumber mill. We had a, a very vibrant lumber mill here, which employed uh, up to 2,000 people at one time, and it slowly went down to about 300 people, and now it's gone and our bean plant, and we also had a cannery, and those are all gone. So what we're seeing now is our community is shifting more toward a uh, retirement community. A lot of retirees come here because it's just a, a beautiful place to live. Uh, the quality of life is the draw that brings folks here, and uh, we have a lot of healthy activities, a lot of outdoor recreation as everything's very close, and we have very large community events of all seasons. Uh, so with us, our, our poverty is really a, a driver of poor health uh, from children all the way to seniors, and uh, it's kind of, it's a, it's a wide variety to combat. In the city ourselves here, uh, the city of Emmett, Emmett's the county seat of our Jim County, and the city itself has a population of about 6,500 people. We feature three city parks, a regular regulation size softball field, an RV park, uh, walking trails in a green belt, and we have river access. Uh, we're home to Emmett's most excellent triathlon, which uh, is a, an event that brings the runners um, to our community in August. It's, uh, it's uh, about a couple thousand. And then we have Emmett Cherry Festival, and it also hosts a, a fun run event. Uh, we also have a community hospital. It has all the modern technology and urgent care facilities. In our recreation district, uh, we have a public swing pool and a 34-acre sports complex. So there's uh, plenty to do. Uh, in our community to keep you active. Back in about 2010, uh, a couple of years ago, maybe 2012, we had a fellow come through town. Uh, his name was Charles Anderson. He's actually from Winter Haven, Florida. And Mr. Anderson, he had spent about 50 years of his uh, life researching and traveling across the nation. He was looking for the uh, Eden of America. And as he came through Emmett, he came through and uh, he did rank us as 29th throughout the nation and actually number one for small cities in the state of Idaho. It was a very honored to have Mr. Anderson because basically we have everything that uh, a perfect little community would, would, would you'd, you'd like to see. So here in Emmett, um, we do have our problems. It's, it's not all perfect. Uh, the first problem we had was um, back in 2008, our food bank. It just closed overnight. Uh, to address poverty and hunger, our community came together. We collaborated. And actually, uh, our faith base actually was the first ones to really pick this up. Brought everybody together. And we had that food bank back open in about a, about a week. Uh, so nobody went hungry. Bills were provided. And so it just showed that in our community, uh, this is what really got us going, was that we came together as a team, and we were able to accomplish bringing the food bank back together. Um, some of the programs that we'd learned in the past was uh, one of the keys that brought bringing this puzzle together. 
And then we moved on to even further that. We had a Hungry Free initiative uh, that came out of our community with the uh, bringing the food bank back up. We didn't stop there. As a community, we continued to move forward to address our hunger needs and our health, and we wanted to be self-sustainable. Uh, having to go out of the county to depend on the other food banks and stuff was, uh, you know, it's a draw on them also. So our goal here was that we really didn't want to have this crisis again. So we kept moving forward to become self-sustainable, and the Hunger Free Initiative uh, came together. And what this was, this is a core team. As you can see on there, a core team of just about every uh, agency, every club, every service club, elected officials, faith-based groups in our community. We came together and we brainstormed and we put goals on the table and we addressed the issues that we had. And it was very successful using this team collaboration. And so with this group, there wasn't anything we couldn't accomplish and everything was going really well. So we can move on to the next slide. So as I said, Emmett was named best in the state. Um, we have all the bones here is what a developer would call it. When you come down into our valley, we're close to Boise, which is our state of capital, about 30 miles, 30 to 40 miles from there, which have all the attractions. It's an affordable place to live, a great place to raise a family. This is a town where you can just let your kids run free and know that they're safe. Uh, we're the centerpiece of the valley. We're um, an attractive streetscape. We just redid uh, most of our landscaping, well-kept storefronts, early handsome historic downtown. Uh, equipped and with all the state, uh, you know, the staffed hospital, outdoor recreation is well within reach. Uh, you can go to the desert, you can go to the mountains, you can go to the snow. It's all about uh, not even an hour away, any direction you want to go. So we have a pleasant 12-month climate, as Mr. Anderson noted. Uh, we have a change of seasons, which are very beautiful. So being the bones of a perfect community, you know, we're all as well here. We we really had no worries, and we all pretty much set back down into our daily routines and our daily lives because we had already answered all the crises here and everyone was happy and um, then the wake up call came out and uh, this was actually a little disturbing because uh, we thought we were so perfect and that was kind of what the earlier slides of this presentation were to show where that uh, we're sitting here thinking that we're, it all looks really good but behind the scene you just really never know. And so as rankings came out, uh, we were first in really uh, a lot of disbelief uh, that we could have such a low ranking. Actually, we were the, the lowest in the state. It was a big wake-up call, and we realized we weren't perfect. So it really humbled us to, to do something. As you can see in our annual checkup, we rebuilt our health issues. And um, it uh, made the front page of the, the newspaper, and uh, everybody was pretty upset with that. Uh, the media react, well, there it was right there. Uh, the community was disbelieving. They saw the media, the newspapers, and our behavioral health was the worst. Uh, we were at a 42, we were 42, uh, smoking, uh, physical fitness, and obesity. And again, uh, we were just all in disbelief, but we knew we had to take some action here. So, uh, Mayor, um, what yes. I'm wondering about is if you could talk to us a little bit about how the collaboration began and, and how you enlisted support. And you, you did have a pretty strong bones, as you said, in infrastructure. So how did that work for you all? Well, it worked. Uh, basically, we've already addressed issues. So we had a good infrastructure. We have infrastructure that's very well in place in our community. But as far as bringing the core team together and the community collaboration, um, our hospital director jumped right on board with this because first off when you think of health you think of hospital and so she grabbed this torch and she called the, the court team together with our news media uh, that's when we started looking at our health rankings as a core team as a group and we looked at this to see how we could fix this first we had to see where the problems were and with the health rankings and the categories it explained each area that we needed to look at so that's how we came together as a team. Uh, the newspaper put this out there for transparency. We wanted everybody to know where we were at. And so the Jim County Community Health Connection was born. And as you can see, we had every player in the community sitting at this table because everybody has a role to play when it comes to health and uh, physical activity. Ever, could you talk a little, thank you, Mayor. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, what the origins were for the health connect connection? I, we have just go into that a little bit. Sure. Um, 
Sue, our community relations person for the hospital, actually approached our economic association uh, with the initial rankings in 2010 and basically enlisted the players at that table to help um, with health because health affects um, every area, especially the economics of a community. So as you can see, we do have a lot of partners. We're trying to figure out how to use each one effectively at this point because you're always um, learning and evolving as you get more people at the table. One thing we did realize in a brainstorming session was that we don't actually have youth representation. We have the school district, but we actually need some youth representation. So we're probably going to be approaching some of the um, clubs at the high school just to make sure that um, since with childhood obesity, we want to make sure that we're helping the kids and, and meeting them where they are. Great. I, I appreciate um, you saying that because it is an ongoing effort and always stepping back and saying who else isn't here working on this with us. And how did you decide where to focus? We yeah. actually had um, our health connection um, had the um, our health department came and they brought the CDC change tool to us which it took a little bit, it took a couple months to complete but it gave us a great place to start and we came up with our three main focuses which were tobacco use, obesity and physical act and chronic disease so it gave us a great place to start so I highly encourage everyone to take the time to do that tool. You need uh, It covers different sectors, so you just need to get everyone at the table and take the time to get it. So if your health department isn't, on, isn't currently part of your partnership, I'd highly recommend that that be your next phone call after this webinar today to get them at the table. Thank you very much for putting a plug in for that. Um, Bill, you want to talk a little bit about the, the goals? that you all came up with. You had a lot going on there. Yes, on our, uh, our health connection meetings, of course, you need to have a goal. And so we were picking our, our one-year, one three-year, and five-year plans. Uh, of course, we went for the low-hanging fruit first because we, we really needed to make some progress here and address some issues. Um, so like the, uh, the first-year plan, we actually went out and got the low-hanging fruit. Um, First thing we did is we actually joined a lot of the programs uh, like Activate Treasure Valley, the Let's Move program, the HEAL program, which is Healthier Eating Active Lifestyles. These are all programs that put things on for you that you could go to without um, no funds needed, no costs, and they'd actually come over and help you and get you started. A three-year plan was more complex and walking trails infrastructure, and a five-year plan was even bigger, such as community centers and such as that. Uh, even looking at our... At our uh, policies. So let's see here. Well, I think what was amazing to me as I spoke with you all was that your low-hanging fruit in one case was actually passing the uh, smoking ordinance. So that was yes. one of the first things you did. Um, yes. And, and, you're right. Go ahead. And one thing is um, a lot of times you do things and you don't realize that you're actually taking action. When we uh, passed, we were actually the first in the state to pass this no smoking ban in the public public areas, parks, and buildings. And this was actually a request by mothers in the city park. They came to the city council because they wanted to make sure that their kids were uh, playing in a smoke-free environment. And so you're right, this is the actual start, but uh, sometimes you don't realize that you're actually taking action when you are. And you have the advantage of having the right people at the table that can make that policy change, which is a really critical point. And that included yourself and some city council folks, as I understand. Could you talk a little it bit did. about the teaming up with Activate? Yes, um, our Activate the Treasure Valley, this was a, a local uh, in our, our Tri-City area, in our Treasure Valley. And Activate the Treasure Valley actually works and looks at your workforce. And so to get the health of your employees up and their well-being, Activate Treasure Valley got us uh, looking at policies and um, getting our, our our uh, employees more active. As you can see here, we have employees that actually were doing physical exercise that we really didn't know about. Uh, it's a good way for them to relieve stress. Uh, the guys here, they actually work on a road crew where they push into the shovel most of the day, but yet they like to go ride their bikes. And this, uh, 
our health cost here in Jim County is uh, actually for the city has gone down very low. We've actually had a zero in, uh, zero increase in health coverage costs, and these uh, city employees actually got a kickback of about two hundred thirty seven dollars a piece because they reduced health costs to our health care here, and so that was a, a big uh, a big feather in their cap and more incentive on the city itself to even pursue these programs and put some policies in place. And policies is, is the tough one because that's where we're lacking right now. But Activate the Treasure Valley came forward and going through them uh, was very beneficial. And, and then we uh, have our... Um, yes? Keep going. I'm, I'm going to keep going with the slides you have here if you want to... Okay. And our, as you can see here, also in our school districts, um, because we are a, we do have poverty, there isn't much money in our budgets because we don't have, we have no industry here in our, our community, so we rely on very little funding. But to get healthy food and fitness in your local schools, the school district has done a great job going out and getting grants and such so they can provide the kids with uh, healthy snacks during the day to make sure that they're getting uh, healthier food. We're really trying to work on getting the unhealthy food, the vending machines and such, out of the schools, which is uh, it's a slow task, but if you start in the lower levels of the elementary and start working, up to your senior level, by the time they get to high school, they're not going to be looking for those vending machines because they're not going to expect them. And so in our schools, we're working at the young age to get fruits and vegetables in there to try to teach them uh, healthy eating activities to help with that child obesity that we're facing nowadays. Great. And you have a uh, fitness challenge? We do. Uh, this is our Let's Move movement, which we became part of, the National Let's Move movement with Michelle Obama. And what we have here is our Mayor's Challenge. And one thing here is that uh, to get the, the community involved and participate, uh, the mayor, your elected officials, people, you need to participate also and show them that it's something that's important to you. But our Let's Mock movement here, uh, people, they had a time period to do a 100-mile walk to get a physical exercise. And uh, we even have local businesses donate the T-shirts and such. And this was a great turnout. It got the community to come out and participate. It was good collaboration on everybody's part. A uh, good time. Everybody did fellowship together, got to meet people, and uh, just so physical fitness, and also showed how many trails that we actually had in our community that most people didn't know about. Uh, making people aware of what you have will get them out there because there was a lot of uh, education here also on what was available. But the let's walk, the let's walk was a uh, was a huge success. I was so surprised how they came out. Mm -hmm. And then also we have our high five membership. Um, we joined, this is part of the HEAL program. We became a high five community. And uh, this has opened many doors for us. Uh, they actually gave us uh, $1,000 of seed money for a grant. And what we're going to do this summer is we're going to take that seed money and we're actually going to start community gardens within the schools. Uh, so we have summer schools here and we have lunch programs during the summertime. And so we have one in our park and then we have one at the elementary school which hosts about 100 kids. So we'll take this seed money and we're going to start a little community garden. And since we have the captive audience of the kids are already there, that's very important is that you have a captive audience so you have participation. We're going to take this money and we're going to start these little gardens up and teach the kids how to grow their own fruits and vegetables and actually put them back into their lunches for them. So the High Five membership was another one free of charge. Just go out there, you become a member. And uh, it's actually by Blue Cross of Idaho, an insurance carrier that puts us out there and they provide everything for you. All you have to do is participate. Great. And uh, Karen's been putting the links to these different programs into the chat so people can go explore those. Um, you've got your uh, new farm to table movement, um, a food hub or co-op, and, and that's you in the front there, Mayor Bill, right? Yes, and um, this is another thing that evolved out of our hunger initiative. As we started these programs, the Hunger Initiative, this is a spin-off, and uh, what we've decided here is we're trying to get healthier food in our community out there for everybody. Um, because of uh, a lot of the folks don't have a chance to, to get out and get the healthy food, they rely on the, uh, you know, the uh, processed food you get out of the grocery stores and such. And so a lot of our health in our poverty type areas is based on they go and they buy the food there that's just not very healthy. So our farm to table movement, we're trying to start a, a food hub. Actually we've got the feasibility study in place which we were successful with grants and it's moving along nicely. So this will complement the farmer's garden. 
So it will encourage more people to do farmer's garden. What they don't sell at the garden, they can sell to the food hub and also to the community. And there will be another uh, way for those people to actually take their EBT cards down there and get fresh produce. Oh, that's great. And then um, uh, the, the new rankings came out, you said, in 2013. Can you just tell us what's going on in this slide here? They did. Um, in our state, the governor will take his cabinet and go around to each community and be a capital for the day where people can come and actually get FaceTime with the governor and his cabinet. Uh, this was the day that our rankings came out, and of course we were lowest, and then now we had moved up to the middle. And you can see there Governor Otter is looking at our headlines of our newspaper uh, that we've ranked up uh, in the middle now. And so Sue Valberg, our community hospital director, is there presenting that to him. And it was a way for the community to be able to brag, so to say, and be proud of what they've done. Uh, the governor was, was impressed, and so was his cabinet, because this actually takes pressure off of them, that we ourselves are moving forward to be self-sustainable and uh, take care of our community and uh, make sure that our folks are taken care of. So he was very impressed with that, and it was a good day for us to be able to host that and to show in those rankings that uh, our work was successful. And uh, one thing I just want to point out here, Mayor, too, is that it's, um, uh, I think when we look at measuring progress, it's important not to look to any individual year as a ranking improvement, but you were looking over the long haul. So, you know, moving up from the lowest quartile to a middle quartile, that's a very good thing. But knowing that rankings are all relative and everybody, if everybody's moving together, everybody's improving together, then those rankings are, are not the way to look at measuring progress. But, um, but obviously what you all have done there and it's over time, it's starting to really show dividends. And you've got multiple yeah, ways of measuring, yeah. Go ahead. So I would agree with that as far as the rankings, because of these rankings, the way they come out, they have categories. And right. you're right, you can't judge on how you are with these, but they're a good tool. It's a guide for you to use to go look and see where you need to do work. And so when we look at these, we know that these rankings, even the next ones, they're going to fluctuate. Where you may have excelled, you might go back down. And where you need work, it might still be there. So we use the rankings as a tool now. We look at it, we look at each category. And basically, it opens our eyes that there are categories and there are areas that you need to be taking note of. Because right. in our community, we were missing areas because we really didn't realize we needed to be looking there. And right. so you're correct. When we use these rankings, they're actually a tool, a guide for us to, to go off to, to go after that uh, improvement. Which is what you did with the change tool. You dug deeper into your local issues. So yes. and what have been some of your biggest challenges? Uh, what's your next step, Mayor? Our biggest challenge is, of course, is uh, with any volunteer group, it suffers burnout, sustainability. And so as we work on this group, we've been able to hold this group together for the past three years uh, by completing our goals and making new goals. So now we're right is the sustainability of this also is uh, the rec district. We have a rec district, and Abra is here. She's the director of the rec district. So our thought here is that uh, a department like the rec district really needs a type to pick this up to be the stead, steady, the steadfast group that handles it. Because your elected officials come and go, your volunteers come and go, and then all the work you've done can disappear. And so that's one thing is the sustainability. Find some place to house your program to where you're going to have a full-time director that's going to be looking there, and it's always going to be there. Uh, the next thing is, of course, policy. And I've mentioned we're in the middle of the road now, and we need to move forward. We've already done basically the low-hanging fruit. But policy is something that's very difficult because this is the paperwork part. And you have to fit the policies to your community and your needs. And so to go out and research the policies and actually get them done, this is going to take a little more time. So our next move now is to start getting some policies in place as far as you know, city workers, community-wide. Uh, but that's where you, you tend to get hung up. The group itself uh, is excited. As long as we have goals and we can move forward, we can keep them active. But sustainability and policy, and then your participation is another issue. Uh, if nobody participates in your programs, then they're just not going to, they're not going to do well. So they get the public participating in your programs, that's another key. And so you have to keep them fun and uh, make them look really interesting to get them in there. And of course, then you have your captive audiences to just team them off of the places that are already in place. Uh, and bring your programs in to educate people. But there are yeah. challenges, and that's why we need to get out of the middle and start moving toward the top. 
Um, and I'm going to put in a little plug. We had talked about the What Works for Health database, and Karen will put the uh, link in for everybody. But we had talked about how uh, your team was actually selected to get some uh, coaching and how to uh, take the next steps and address your next challenges. So Kate Conkle will be um, coaching Abra and the rest of the team on uh, going in and perhaps looking at the What Works uh, database and picking policies that will fit to your community. Um, and speaking of Abra, um, could you talk with us a little bit, Abra, about how you're keeping people engaged and how you do sustain the effort? Okay. We actually, um, three years into the program, we have lots of volunteers, and in the beginning we had a lot of concrete projects, so we could we were easily able to see some results. And now that we're getting into policy and a little more long-term planning, we're in the process of revisiting our partnerships and just seeing how to effectively use each partner. For many partnerships, um, many partners, it may not make sense for them to sit at a monthly me um, committee meeting, but it may be seeing um, with our police department you know, coming to our some of our let's move activities and play, you know, playing games and doing stuff with kids. And um, so there's always different ways to use your partners. So we're looking into making sure that we're using the resources we have available to us. Also, we're looking at um, basing things on entities instead of just the rep at the table, because as we know, people move jobs, people burn out, people retire. So we're trying to get solid partnerships with the actual entities, the health department, the rec district, city, so that even if there's turnover in people, the entity is still there so that the work can continue. Yeah, that's a really good point. There's always going to be turnover, but having those organizational or entity um, collaborations, having that strong um, is, the, is the key. And, and, and what are the keys, do you think, to your success? I think the biggest thing is many of us on our committee are, I just feel like we're giant sponges. We look for information, partners, resources, anywhere we can. And act from Activate Treasure Valley to Let's Move to seeing what other school districts do, other communities have done. We just go out and look at the people who are winning and then how we can bring that back to our community. We also as Jan mentioned, we're working with Kate Conkle, our health coach from the Jim County or the Jim or the County Health Rankings team, and she's going to help us focus um, to make sure that we're moving forward. One of our most important goals in there is to have quantitative, uh, be able to quantify the job we're doing so that we make sure that we're moving forward. Um, if you haven't. I believe the health coach team you can apply for each year, so I would highly, that would strongly encourage your communities to look into that as well. Um, and then I think our another success is now that we're um, familiar with the take action tools from the health county rankings, we'll be able to look for information where um, and find scientifically proven programs to work so that we're not reinventing the wheel, so that we can uh, incorporate many different things into our community and know that they're going to have a positive impact. Great. Thank you, Avra. So, uh, Mayor Bill, if you could just share to wrap this up on with other communities, just three lessons you've learned or uh, those that are being learned, what would those three lessons be? Well, our lessons that we learned was, one, is communication. Everybody was doing something. But nobody was putting it together. We were fragmented. And putting all the puzzle pieces together is really showed the results. And so basically, the communication was a big key of everybody talking to each other. Uh, commitment. Once we start these programs, uh, everybody that comes to the table, really, you have to have some commitment there. So just because um, you have meetings, you really need to commit to go there and, and do your action items and take that on. So as everybody at the core table sat down, Commit what was another key, commitment to getting done their tasks. And of course, the breaking down the silos. And this could fall under communication also, but uh, not one agency can do something this big by themselves. So if one agency thinks that they can do this because their programs, they have programs in place and they're happy with what they're doing, but the fact that they've siloed themselves, it kind of separates them from even a bigger goal that they can accomplish. 
So coming together and breaking down the silos and tying all the programs together uh, has just been tremendous. And I would say our biggest lesson is to break down the, uh, the silos, and uh, that's how we got the fruit of our labors. Because one goal that one person cannot obtain by themselves, everybody working together has something to offer, and uh, we are able to be successful by bringing everybody together. So breaking down silos is a, a real, real big um, a big key to being successful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I, I love how it's such a strong story of collaboration. And here you are in a rural community. Everybody's you know, already proven that they can make a difference. But still, they needed to come together in new and different ways. And you all are so open to that learning. And I think that that um, really shines through in your story, how open you all are. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. And what we'd like to do right now is move into some questions from our audience, and I know that there are some, and Karen is yeah. uh, going to tee us up here. Yeah, we have, this is a, a nice segue, how you ended talking about your partnership. Um, we have a question from Andrea about how do you hold your partners accountable? You, you're, you've talked about bringing you know, the different partners together, that you need to have their commitment, that you need to, to you know, break out of those silos, but how do you keep folks accountable? And so maybe, okay. um, yeah, Mayor Bill, you want to talk first? Yeah. Okay, so how to keep them accountable? Well, that's a good question because you really can't fire a volunteer. And everybody's there as volunteers to participate. But uh, when you're all sitting around that table there and we go through the action items, and when that person doesn't show up with what they needed, it's pretty much kind of like the, you've got the, the corner in shame. Uh, everyone looks at you waiting and, and keeps you going. But if you have that member of the table and they're not going to commit and they're not going to show up, then that's where you probably need to look at finding a new member that will pick it up. But again, there's uh, the accountability part is the honor system. And again, if you have someone that's not going to um, step up to the plate to the table, you probably really need to address it and then maybe ask somebody else if they'll take on the task. But that's, that's a difficult one. Well, this is Karen, and, and I would just chime in too that I think that whatever was talking about, about really focusing on the entities or the organizations who are your partners um, and being clear with them about what it means to be part of your partnership helps to build that accountability. And so you're not just relying on the representative who comes to the meeting, but you're, you're actually having a conversation and laying out some expectations with your partner organizations um, and making sure that people are, are clear about what it means to be part of, um, of Health Connection. So I think that's a really great strategy for accountability too. Mm -hmm. And having a very clear answer to why. Why why are we part of this? What's the greater vision that we're trying to accomplish? Which I think you all have been really, really good at doing. Yeah. Here's another question yeah. too. We have another question um, from Tracy who is asking about um, faith based or local and local police department partners. Do you have have you worked with those sectors at all in your um, in your health connection? Or could you repeat that? I was breaking up a little bit. Which yeah. partners? Faith-based and um, community safety or local police department? Oh yes, we have uh, our community faith-based uh, group is at the table with us and that's our organization of all of our churches. Um, they're definitely there, they're big supporters and of course the police department and uh, all the uh, safety agencies are there, even though sometimes we won't have them come to the meetings. But again, that's just like you said earlier, those are agencies that are in place and uh, when you give them a task, they'll fulfill, they fulfill the task, but they're very, actually very involved in all of this. And I think you were talking about, um, Bill, also at the beginning when the food pantry closed and the many faith-based stepped forward with that. Wasn't that the beginning of that? Yes, it was. It was actually our faith-based group that stepped in first. Right. And uh, then we all stepped in together. There's another question here. I, I think you addressed this, but maybe you could um, talk about it in a little more uh, detail. Tabitha is wondering what your timeline was for getting this far. Well, our timeline, uh, I think both of us could probably answer this one. Uh, the timeline? was uh, when we first started, we 
we uh, did our low-hanging fruit. Of course, we had the one-year goal of goals, uh, but to get this far, we we were actually I think a little surprised that we made it this far so quick. And so it just shows that, uh, and now that we're into the slower part of the policy, that's a little bit slower. But I think we were surprised that we made it this fast. But we really had um, we didn't think we wouldn't make it this uh, would make uh, an improvement, but. We really didn't have a realization that we'd go this far in such a short period of time. That's how I kind of took it. What do you think, Cabra? Yeah, like Mayor Bill said, we actually were able to move through our one-year goal pretty quickly because there was funding available through our health depart our state health department, and so that just went right in line. And then our five-year goal, the city had just completed a pathway plan. So now we have that, and the city um, is on it if land becomes available and funding becomes available to complete some of our pathways. So I think we must have had some things in place. We just didn't know big picture um, until we put them all together and realized we could get some of the stuff done really quickly. You know, um, we have another question here, too, and because your health care um, organization really took the lead initially. I'm wondering if you could answer this one. It has to do with um, what are some long-term strategies for medical uh, organizations, you know, healthcare, to improve pop health, population health. And I know that's, that's an, a frequent question we get is, you know, how can we get our local hospitals to really understand population health versus just treating individual behaviors? Um, this is Abergan. Um, our hospital, part of our um, health connection, we were able to get funding for some heart disease education and diabetes education and kind of get a train-the-trainer type situation. Um, so our hospital works with all of our local doctors and, and doctor's offices so that everyone's giving out the same message when it comes to heart disease, diabetes, um, so our hospital is taking uh, probably more of a proactive approach than it has, you know, in the last five, ten years to really look at more of the wellness side and, and pre, you know, and the prevention so that we're not just constantly treating people with diabetes. We're actually trying to prevent it at this point. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, there's actually, do you all have any free clinics in your community? Yeah, such as a, a free clinic, such as a little more specific. We have, um, we do have, uh, you can go to the emergency room and such and, and be taken care of. The county has indigent funds where if someone's ill or such, they can go and be taken care of. But as far as just a, a free walk-in clinic itself, I, I don't believe we have one of those. But we do have health that's available for those that are in need through our county uh, indigent funds. Okay, so you are wrapping in the um, targeting people that don't are most vulnerable. You're wrapping them into your long-term plans here. Oh, definitely. Right. Okay. Well, we're about out of time, so I want to thank you all again so much, and thanks for the questions here. Um, Karen has also chatted how um, people can reach each of you. You've been very gracious to, um, to offer your email, so thank you for that. And we are going to offer our emails as well um, and let you all know, so please, please contact us. Um, we are here to help, thanks to the Robert Witch Johnson Foundation. We have three community coaches and about to add a point. Yeah. So as always, we would invite you to stay connected with us. You can um, follow our county by county blog on our website at countyhealthrankings.org. You can follow us on Twitter at chrankings. Um, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our e-newsletter to make sure that you're aware of upcoming webinars. We hope that you've been inspired by our guest presenters from Gem County, Idaho, that you know where to find tools and guidance on our website for how to improve the health of your community, and that you are leaving with answers to the question we asked at the beginning of this webinar. If we're a middle-ranked county, what can we do to improve our health?
And when the rankings come out again this year on March 26, we encourage you to take action, as Gem County did, no matter where you are in the pack. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, and thank you again, Mayor Bill and Abra. Bye-bye. Thank you.